to the channel, everybody. I hope you'll, you are all doing well. Hope you've been able to get to the track, do some racing, whether you race cars, boats, motorcycles, and M1A Abrams, planes, whatever. Hope you're out having fun this summer, enjoying your toys, and being safe doing it. With that in mind, we are going to talk about a subject that is technical. It is not necessarily tuning related, but nevertheless, it's very important. And I, I think it's a good time to, to talk about it as I'm about ready to leave for a half mile event. The Indy Airstrip attack is coming up August 14th and 15th. It's going to be live streamed by 1320 video. Uh, it's presented by Shift Sector and numerous other supporters you guys really need to check it out it'll be on facebook and youtube it's, it's a real good time it's motorsports it's not something you probably watch all the time huge variety of cars some that you will know some that you won't but it'll be fun watch it that being said we're going to talk about parachutes and safety with parachutes on drag cars and half mile cars and anything that uses a parachute uh, maybe you go to bonneville and you do land speed racing you're going to use a slightly different type of parachute, which we're going to get into. The difference between a drag chute and a land speed chute. Um, but we're going to talk about the reasons why. And I think that it's really important because you could hurt yourself or others if you don't set this up right. We've all seen the cars doing the Chinese wheelie at the drag strip. Front wheel drive mainly. Lots of weight on the front. Hit the parachute. No weight in the back. The back end comes off the ground, the car turns into the wall. Not a good deal. There are definitely some things we can do to prevent this. So looking at this picture here, we're going to go to a zoomed in one in just a second. This was a 192 mile an hour pass. Uh, I believe it was a Simpson parachute. It was the 10 foot diameter. So it's like 78 square feet, something like that. Um, I could be wrong, but anyway, that's approximate. Uh, you can see an up angle if you look closely because of where the tether point on the car was. And this is what we're going to talk about first. We're going to talk about tether points. So let's go to the zoomed in one. Now, if you follow the cursor, you're going to see where it is right here under the parachute bag. This line right here is going up. And that kind of led into my problem the day before this, I ordered a small chute. I received a large chute. I didn't unpack it first to verify what I had. I got a parachute for a 4,000 pound car instead of a 2,500 something pound car, which is what the, it weighs with me in it. It was also mounted way too low, which we will have pictures of that to show the difference. And it picked the back of the car up. And I went for a little bit of a ride. Fortunately, I was already slowing down. I was just doing 160. It was not a good time. Fortunately, I'd used the bathroom before I got in the car. So other than my pride being hurt, nothing else was too bad. There was a bunch of dirt in the car. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a good time. And here you can see huge up angle. And this is obviously off-road, but you can see that everything's going wrong for me that particular pass. So let's keep that in mind. Now we're going to go to the right parachute. Still a drag racing parachute. But you can look at the line. And there is some perspective stuff here because it was a zoomed-in shot. But you can see this is a lot flatter to the back of the car. This is a small, significantly different. This was designed for a 2,400 pound car. Got the little drogue chute out here that helps. We're going to talk about the drogue chutes and launchers and things also. So what fixed that, and you can see the speed, 199. So I had just pulled it after crossing the finish line. This is probably still 170, 180 miles an hour. Um, but see how much flatter that is. So what fixed that, and alternatively, what caused the problems, is the parachute mount used to be down here, where the cable is coming through. Because I thought, oh, hey, I need to be able to load my car and put stuff in the back. Why would I 
Why would I make it so I can't use the hatch? Well, there's a good reason. It's called center of gravity. And in most cars, it tends to be about where your camshaft is. It's not always. And you really do need to get some corner scales and accurately calculate where your center of gravity is to make sure that you get this correct. But most cars, it's about where the camshafts are if you were to draw a line backwards. So from here, further back, more or less something like that. This might be a little high, but a little high is definitely better than way too low, as we already saw. Don't want to pick the back of the car up. We moved this about a foot. That was substantial. But that made all the difference. Now, when we go to this picture, we can see Miles and me uh, at that same, well, at the race the next year. This isn't the Neverlift 2018. So you can see me with that same parachute, fairly flat here, a little bit of an angle. I could probably actually bring it up. Miles, very, very flat. His mounting point is slightly above the height of his tire. So about 25, 25 and a half inches off the ground. This is a land speed racing parachute. It is twice as much from Stroud, but there's a difference. It's noticeable. Smaller. It has a lot more of the vents in it. So it isn't as aggressive. Plus the tether is twice as long. So the moment of inertia is greatly reduced as we lengthen the tether. So it can't sit there and whip the back of the car around, make it unstable, make it drive off the road, which when we go back to my unfortunate incident here, that is not straight behind the car. That is at an angle. But see how short the tether is? It, it probably slacked a little bit. But what happened here was entirely my own fault because I didn't double check to see how big that parachute was. And if anybody needs a large parachute in pink, I happen to have one sitting in a box. Going back to this, land speed shoot. Okay. Maybe not what you need if you're drag racing and have a short shutdown, but if you're going to half mile race or land speed race, obviously, you need a different style of parachute. You don't want to just use a drag parachute. It will make the car move around. Trust me, I know this from personal experience. Let's run the bigger tether. So, we're going to go to some of the aerodynamics here. Now you can see how the tether point is here. My new wing from Whitfield Manufacturing is all the way around. Because this encapsulated the back of the car, and hatchbacks definitely have problems that sedans don't, we had to also change the angle of this launch to get it to come up and out into the airstream to get it to properly inflate. And if you don't do that, I happen to also know from unfortunate experience that it won't inflate. It will sit there and twirl and it will wrap around this and tear the whole thing off. And then you don't have a parachute at all. So depending on the design of the back of the car, you need to know the angle and height just to get the thing to inflate properly. Okay, so we're going to bring in the aerodynamics part. I have a rear wing. I have these roof rails, which are more accurately called flow fences. That's an idea from a lot of motorsports, specifically in NASCAR. They require them to be a minimum of three-quarter inches tall. That helps directional stability. It acts like a rudder. Even though it's not a boat, it's going to keep it going straight. And this piece, this is the one thing that almost no drag car, specifically Honda, seems to employ. This is known as a wicker bill or gurney flap. And even though that's only, I don't know, maybe three eighths of an inch tall, that generates enough downforce to bend these rods if you have the wrong ones. I had two aluminum ones thinking that, oh, I'm not gonna have any downforce in the back. Yeah, I was wrong. So now I have Chris Alston, uh, chromoly ones. There are three of them, supports that wing. That also helps keep the back down. So if you're going to run 180 in the quarter and you don't have proper aerodynamics, you really need to find somebody that knows what they're doing. I'm giving you a cheat sheet here. Put a wicker bill on the back. Put the wing up. This piece right here, I'm going to have to use my hand so that you can't get confused, is taller than these outsides 
to make sure the air moving in the center is going to catch as much of that wicker bill as possible. It makes a huge difference. These cars get extremely unstable at 183 miles an hour. And the reason I use that speed specifically is because at 181, I was fine with your standard flat deck wing style uh, drag wing for a hatch. The one that everybody buys because it's the cheap one. At 183, there was a little bit of squirm. I didn't think anything about it. At 185, under full power, the car wanted to turn all on its own because the air was circula circulating under here and creating lift. That's why we have the long side plates. The ones that end right here are junk for high speed. Don't use it. It's show only. You want a Whitfield wing that drops all the way down or equivalent. It has to come down. You don't want air getting under here and picking the back of your car up. That's what we're talking about with the parachute stuff. We're trying to avoid that. It's only going to make deploying the parachute worse. This is why at World Cup I have seen cars come off the ground and throw sparks. And I'm not exaggerating. This is not a Napoleon Dynamite moment. Two feet uh, in the air, back tires. One of them turned right into the wall. Fortunately, the driver was able to walk away. The car was totaled. But aerodynamics are extremely important. Do not overlook them if you want to go really fast. The last picture is a well-known Civic. And they happen to be friends of ours. I'm sure everybody recognizes the back of the old Outlaw car. Now, they didn't have the wing plates all the way down. They did some aerodynamics down here that we're not going to touch on in this video. But you can see right here, right at this edge, they have the wicker bill. Their tether point is about where mine is. It's mounted high because they ran 200 miles in the quarter. They have to run two chutes. They run two small uh, Stroud 400s or equivalent. Um, canister launched. And then the angle is high. So if you see a picture of this deploy, they'll actually be above the roof line as they're inflating. So... Some important stuff to think about, guys. You need to know the center of gravity of your car. You need to put the chute tether mount as high as you can. Tie it into the cage. There's no reason to put it down low. It needs to be somewhere here. And depending on your application, if you're an Integra or some other type of sedan, let's say, um, I don't know, we're going to just use a random example. Saturn Ion, Cobalt, Redline you're going to probably be 26 inches off the ground for where that tether point has to be. So I want everybody to be safe. I don't want anybody getting hurt. That's why we're doing these tech videos. That all being said, if you like this content, please consider subscribing. If you haven't already, share with a friend that you think needs to see this information or might just enjoy it. Uh, if you want notifications of new content as it's added, because it's race season, it's slowing down. I'm not going to exaggerate. I got a little lazy working on race cars. Uh, click the bell icon, and it will let you know as we upload. Anyway, I hope everybody's safe. Have a, a nice weekend. If you can, tune in and watch. Just tune in on your big screen. Stream from your phone. Watch some half-mile racing. Watch something a little bit different. Shift Sector, the Indiana Corn Council, 1320 video. Everybody involved going to appreciate your viewership. Thanks, guys, and take care.